Welcome to the Northampton Commission on Disabilities. This meeting is being audio taped and videotaped. And we will start with introductions. I'll start. I'm Tori Ackland. I'm the chair. We'll go this way. Hi, I'm Hannah Coyle. I'm the vice chair. I'm Ruth McGrath, the secretary. Michael Mayhe, member. City Councilor Marianne Larch. Next, we have public comment. Do we have any members of the public? No one's here. No one's here. No one's here. Okay. Um, all right. So, approval of the May 19th, 2015 minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have corrections. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Want to say your corrections? Yeah. Um, so, with uh, agenda item number four, it's Christy Geffen, G E F F I N. This is in the minutes? Yes, in the minutes. Um, item number four. Her name was misspelled? Yeah. Okay. So it's a misspelling. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then under new business with the benches, and we can discuss this after because I do have a, some information about the benches. Okay. That, um, it said that it will say donated by the Northampton Commission on Disability on the date, mm -hmm. and the date wasn't anything I knew about. No, me either. So I'm going to just say that that I think was um, just make an amendment to remove it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. But otherwise, okay. Well done. So do we, so what do, do we vote again I mean, to approve with the as amended? As, can we do yeah. another motion to approve as amended? Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. So the next item is um, my issue, which so in, inaccessibility of the check-in system at Valley Medical in Florence. Mm -hmm. So um, is everyone familiar with what it is, or should no. I explain it? Okay. I, I, I don't know what it All is. All right. So what it is is um, so. You go in, and you go. There's a machine, mm -hmm. and you push a button, and you get a piece of paper that mm -hmm. tells you what your number is. Mm -hmm. So you sit down, and there are screens that there's a screen that flashes on your number. So when your number comes up on the screen, you go and you check in, and there are visual indicators that tell you where to go and check in. There are no auditor auditory prompts. It is um, completely inaccessible to me if I were going to be going alone, which I could, that could theoretically happen, that I could be dropped off and go there. And um, there might be ways, I'm not sure if the machines are wheelchair accessible or not. Yes, they are. They are. They are. Um, but I do know that it's inaccessibility, inaccessible to me. So what I'm asking is, um, for the support from the commission to um, send, a send a letter or talk with them to do whatever I need to do to bring it to their attention. Can I ask a question about that? Sure. So are you saying, uh, so this is a, at all the different uh, value, I mean there's value now oh, and there's, uh, there's an the East Hampton one. Um, the only one that I'm, the only one that I've Experienced it with is Florence, so I'm not Main sure. I've, I've been right, to 70 Main, Main Street. Street. They don't use the same system. Okay, okay, so it's it's in Main Street. So I would like to, um, I would like to interact with them in some way, either by a letter or a conversation, to bring this to their attention. And I would just like to, <coughs> I would like to be able to say that I'm doing this on behalf of myself as a person with a visual impairment, but also with the support of the Commission on Disability. So that's why I'm just bringing it up to ask if. I can have the support from the commission to Jim has its challenge. Yeah, I got another yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, Corey, is when you, because I, I don't know if I've been in the medical in Florence, is there any type of um, receptionist that will direct people if somebody's confused about the system? Um, I don't know. 
it would be confusing to me to be able to find that person because that person would be assuming that everyone was using the system. So you and have to use the system first, okay. So mm -hmm. I, I think, so I mean one possible solution might be that they would have someone who would have that awareness or that if you called ahead of time and said, I'm coming, I can't use the system, this is my appointment time, and, and ask for assistance. Like, there might be solutions, but what I'm asking for, I would like to engage them in some kind of dialogue about making this accessible, and I just want to have the backing of the commission so that I can say that I'm the chair of the commission and I would like to do this. Okay, Ruth has her hand up. Yes. Um, I've around. actually interacted with them about that system on a slightly different issue. They have a person who's in charge of it who is more than willing to work with everybody. Mm -hmm. They did have a four-legged table right mm -hmm. in front of the box that's on the wall. People with wheelchairs couldn't mm -hmm. get into it to push the buttons. I asked, she came out and actually, she actually came out when I was in the waiting room and talked to me. Mm -hmm. Said they would move the table and before I left, that table was gone. Mm -hmm. They were very nice about it. Great. I also mm -hmm. asked her about, um, well I didn't mention blindness in particular, but mm -hmm. they yeah. didn't have the second, mm -hmm. there's two places where the numbers show on the wall mm -hmm. and it bings, which is supposed to tell you where the number's coming up, it doesn't tell you the number. Right. Before they put right. the second one up, if I was sitting with my back to it, I can't hear it and I couldn't see it. She says what they're supposed to do is if you don't respond to your number, they they're them. supposed to verbally mm -hmm. call your number. But they don't all do it. I've been sitting I've there and I've seen it. Never it's heard them do it. It's excellent. Yeah, well they've done you it when I've been right. there. Yeah, they've done it when I've been there, but I've also seen them when they haven't done it. There was a deaf gentleman, there was a blind gentleman in there, and he was sitting there and finally I went over and tapped him and said your number is up. Because wow. they never call his number. Okay. So, well, I suppose we could send a letter of, the, of yeah. the concerns. Bringing it to their attention. And they did a survey yeah. too to, to get more information how people liked it yeah. because there are issues. And the lady that came out, and I didn't, I don't even have her name, I didn't get it, but she said they're, they're trying to weed out all the issues to the system. Exactly. That's why they put the second set of numbers up so people can see it from both yeah. ways, mm -hmm. which helped me, but okay. it doesn't help Tori. Uh, so, Ruth. Um, was that survey done like internally as people were sitting there? It was on that table right by the, the, the keypad where yeah. you check in. Um, one thing that I did suggest to her that you know, things haven't been there. done on was I said they should have braille on that machine just like they do at the bank or any place else, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I, I, would, I would just like the backing of the commission to address it with them. Right, just send a letter and say there's concerns. Okay. And this is yeah. the issue that was brought forth. Is there a way, some way, do that I have a motion for that? They could wait a minute. Tori, sorry, I'm sorry. Finish. I'm if sorry. there is some way that they could reply back to us, or if not, come to a meeting and talk. Yeah, but that would be great. Um, you think you can take a vote because then you can say it was unanimously okay approved by the okay. Commission. So can yeah. can we make a motion that um, make a motion? I'll make that motion that we send that letter to Valley Medical in Florence. Thank you. Second. Mm -hmm. so second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. So I will um I will work on that. Find out who the person is and I'll work on that. Okay. Thank you all. Um you're welcome. Next. Ways to ensure accessibility for deaf and hard of hearing individuals at public meetings. Ruth McGrath. Okay, I went to a meeting, this was back in the beginning of April, end of March. It's been several months. Um, but I have a deaf friend who was there, and it was in the hearing room, um, not in council chambers. He doesn't need an interpreter. He's very good at lip reading. He's usually absolutely fine. Um, the podium was set up, and he sat where he could see who was speaking, and he could see the committee. Uh, unfortunately, um, after a few speakers, they all stopped going up to the podium. They were behind right. him. I wound up interpreting for him sign language because he couldn't see them, he couldn't understand what was going on, so he asked me if I would do it. I've done it for him for other meetings. Um, and then we ran into a situation where they were behind me, and I didn't have my hearing aids in, and I couldn't help him either because I couldn't see them. So I have a suggestion that either um, chairs of committees be asked to ask speakers to either come up to where they can be seen, 
I don't think they should ask if there's any death for her period because a lot of people don't like to be pointed out. I don't think you should do that. Yeah, but we have to be accessible to those people at the same time. Mm -hmm. And all it takes is making sure your speakers come up. You know, it's, it's not... Just like our committee meetings, we bring the chairs right up and let them sit right yeah. in front of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I know in this particular instance, it was a problem for both of us, more for... Where, where, when was it? It was meeting? the one on the, on the water, the raising the rates, which they raised anyway. That meeting, it said at... Um, With the mayor? Yeah, yeah. I wound up interpreting the end of that meeting for him. But, except what I could. The people that were directly behind me, I couldn't even help them with that because I couldn't see them. Either. Because I know with Rodney Kunis, mm -hmm. he had written something and he asked me to present it, so I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So that, my suggestion is just to either uh, committee chairs be made um, aware that they should you know, take this into consideration or, excuse me, or even that a placard be placed in, in each meeting room that just says, uh, all speakers, please move to the podium or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was that And one thing that's not on here, but I did last month, I just really quick want to talk about, mm -hmm. uh, I did call DPW about the, the problem with the crossing spot right. coming down from Elm Street oh, yeah. to South Street. Mm -hmm. I have not had a response. I left a message twice. Hmm. And haven't had energy response. Rich, yeah. I left him on his voicemail. Also, Alex is all down Patty. Oh, really? He oh. went with Lori um, Anderson. Oh. Uh, Alex was the one who helped us with the handicap part. Exactly. He's working for MassDOT. Okay. Yeah. More money. Okay. All right. Um, and then Ruth had another agenda item, oh, reminder yeah. to maintenance staff to unlock the basement door by the elevator to ensure accessibility to all for public meetings. This is the basement door in City Hall. The City Hall. And we've learned into that. You go around the side of the building where the elevator entrance is. The back door will be open, but that door at 4 o'clock, they lock it up tighter in a drum, and that's it. There is no accessibility. Yeah, I'm going to say that that, may I speak? Yes. Uh, that's been a long-standing problem because exactly. I know way back Human Rights Commission would um, contact me on many occasions about keeping, having that door kept open and um, it's, if somebody may leave it unlocked <coughs> and then somebody comes out and locks it, you know, so with people in and out. Um, we, we talked they no longer have them. the Human Rights Commission at City Hall anymore. Oh, yeah? They have it next door. Huh. Well, we talked to the maintenance guy about it. He said nobody told them to unlock it. Yeah, and so that's a big problem. So whoever schedules meetings in the rooms. That, you know what, Patty, I think it would be, you should definitely call um, David Pomeroy's to let him know again. Mm -hmm. And let him know that Ruth has brought this up. And it was brought to our commission again and ask him how come the maintenance or janitors who are on duty, do they actually have access to all the meetings that are occurring at City Hall? Council chambers, we don't have to worry about. Yeah, like is there a schedule? Um, right. And I know before um, contacting David Conrance about, you know, Re reiterating about the door being unlocked. He was very helpful. Oh, he is. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, different things happen. One person unlocks it, another person locks right. it. And you get change of staff. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I can, I can um, talk to David Pomerantz okay. and see if there Thank can you. just be some awareness about it. COD and Cooley Dickinson Hospital Joint Committee meeting. Yeah. Patty. Oh. Yes, so today we had our first ad hoc committee, and it was up at the hospital. We had 15 different people there, mm -hmm. um, members of Cooley Dickinson staff, <coughs> Dr. Conway, who was in charge of the Yay. emergency room at Cooley Dickinson Hospital. We had fire, we had police, Stavros was there, um, and it was just a great exchange all about the situation with emergency room and working right. with persons with disabilities. And this committee is going to be meeting three times a year. Um, and I will say, Councilor LaBarge did sort of get the hospital um, 
to okay. interact with us. Um, and I, I think it's just a really great connection for our commission and um, the hospital and working with a lot of the people um, in safety. Betsy. Betsy Shelley Jensen. Mm -hmm. She is unbelievable and um, very respectful throughout um, the state of Massachusetts. And Betsy talks about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And she's excellent at the Cooley Dick. She's just excellent no matter where she goes in social services. She'll be coming to our committee in September, mm -hmm. distinctly talking about those issues right there, which is civil rights issues. Mm -hmm. And also, Jeff Harness will be coming in and doing a presentation for an hour about transportation and the Cooley Dick and combining and working together. But I think it was a great success today. And um, Ruth, I have to say that I think you presented the issues very well. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Great. And, and again, Jeff Harness, who has come to our two of our meetings, um, has been very supportive of this whole whole idea. Right. And I've also suggested today, which I was shocked how people did know Chris Palamas. So. I'm going to ask him also to join us at that meet, those meetings also. I think he'll be very vibrant with it. So a meeting well worth going to and being a participant in. So you'll be hearing more about excellent. Uh, right, autism was a biggie. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was surprised it was it was. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, other business, there are a couple of things that I have and then we'll see what other people have. Um, one thing is that um, Patty and I spoke about that I, I will be writing um, a letter to the mayor asking to have Daniel Langer removed mm -hmm. from the commission because he hasn't attended meetings for over a year. I support that 100%. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so I just want to say, <clears throat> after talking with um, Tori about this, um, that if, if we look at our bylaws, um, what we need to do, um, and actually we are doing it now, any member of said commission may, after a public hearing, which this could be, if so, request to be removed for cause by the appointing authority. So what Tori's talking about is a letter to um, Mayor Narkowitz as being the appointing authority. Um, so. That's, that would be the step here. Is right. that something we want to put in the minutes or do we want to leave that out? No. I would just say a letter is being sent to the mayor in regards to um, dismissal due to attendance. Okay. Um, so so mm -hmm. Dan did ask for a leave of absence, but it's been for well over a year. year. And um, mm -hmm. three of us, um, Patty, you, Marianne, and myself, we've all tried to contact him and haven't gotten an I response. I want to his help. Yeah. Well, did, you, did you talk to him actually? No, I mean, I already told them in the mayor's office that this is very unfair when people do want to belong to this committee. Mm -hmm. Right. And they can't get in here because of that. And, um, you know, anybody can come to these meetings and be mm -hmm. part of it. Um, so he could come as a member of the public. Well, that's what I told right. Danny. Yeah. I said he can actually do that. That way he's not obligated. Mm -hmm. right. so, he does really have a lot to offer. So. Yeah. Right. So also to the proclamation. I oh, that's the other thing I was going to say. But you, you want to talk about that? Of course. Yeah. And um, this is something that Ruth had sent some information <coughs> in regards to ADA, and I saw the proclamation in there. One was a religious type one, and I don't want to get involved in that. Mm -hmm. The other one was the typical proclamation for ADA for their 25th anniversary. I don't have the information yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. So I printed it out. I went and saw Ruth and I. We went last Thursday. I thought Cindy was in the office because I didn't get a call back from her, so I assumed she got my message, but she was gone away. Her mm -hmm. son had graduated from North Hampton High School and was oh. seeking out a college. It's that but time anyways, of Mm -hmm. We talk, I talked with Lynn Simmons, gave her the information. The language on it is unbelievable. 
And also there was other language, I think Ruth, there was two paragraphs that I looked at that I asked about um, civil rights to be added on there and there was another thing on there about schools, businesses and so forth like that. So I told Cindy that I would not be around on July 9th because I'll be in Dallas starting from July 2nd to the 12th, mm -hmm. that we only have one meeting in July mm -hmm. and to have that ready. So today I talked with her. She has gone through it. She's presenting it with the mayor just in case they want to change some of the wording on that and add on what the mayor or whatever Cindy is looking at. And I would highly suggest that people that are on this committee attend it when there's a proclamation. Come to city council and attend the meeting. I don't want just one person coming up to get the proclamation. All of you come up. You all come up to where Tory's going to be and be happy about it because it's you. It's everybody here. It would be great. I'm definitely going to receive it and I would love to have other people be there too. Oh, I think so. Ruthie's going to be there. Good. Patty, I don't know. You're going to be around, Patty? Probably not. I didn't think so. So when that's fine. Be? You'll be there possibly. Oh, Michael will July. Be there. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's July 9th. Yes. At oh. 7, 7 p.m. Yes, you got to be there before oh, okay. that. Yeah. Because you got to uh, sign up just in case you want to talk. Yeah. So it's um, Thursday. It's Thursday, yes. July 9th. Um, July 9th. So we'll shoot off. I yeah. would highly recommend that we shoot off on an email a reminder in letters of July 9th with that proclamation. I'll remind you. I'll do that. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll, okay. I will. I will send a reminder. I'm going to be busy writing letters this month. Yeah. <laughs> I will, I will be happy to send a reminder. And I also stated, Patty, you saw on my email that I would appreciate it if the committee would also acknowledge me for expediting this and moving it. Right, yeah, I'm planning on email. speaking, so I'll make sure that gets in there. Sure. So you're going to sign thank up you. for the public portion? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. I don't know, if, I've never seen him present a proclamation, so I don't know if you speak when you get it. Or if you speak later on when all the public stands up. You can, you can, when the mayor reads it off, then he hands it. Okay. So I would say you're in public session. Okay. That there is a proclamation that's coming forth. Da, 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 da. I, um, when I, I received one before, and <coughs> I did not have to sign up during the public session. I just, I was But you can. You can, but I can. Getting... Many people and many agencies have done that, Tori. Oh, okay, well, you, yeah, I, I, I'm just saying I, I did it and then I just received it and then I went up to the podium and said a few words, so you can yeah. do it. Right. Yeah, that's the only thing, it should be a few words. Yes. You yeah. do it when you receive it. That's right. Because right. you've done that. If you go on open yeah. public session, you have three minutes. Yeah. I've done that many times. Right. Yep. Do well. Yep. Sure. Okay. So that would take care of that. And I think, Ruthie, you did bring up about another one coming up in what? Yes, September. Can you have that one made up already, right? It's one we've gotten in the past. For It's um, National Employee of the Disabled Month. Oh, right. Oh, 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 yeah, we usually get a project. That was when I went last October. That yep. was, I think that was when I went. Yes. I received it. Yep. So, um, so that will be good. So what, what month was that, October or September? It's October is the month that we did it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so that's perfect. Who else has other ideas? Patty, you have one? Yes. Um, so I just wanted to update people. You know, the, as I mentioned at the last meeting, the two benches are in Florence. And I have to say that I have seen people sitting on them. Oh. I've seen them. Yeah, so sitting on them and um, the, Isn't that great? The, <laughs> I know. The plaques were ordered and each one um, was 139, but he um, sold them to me for 125. Yeah, he was, he was very. So when are they coming in, Patty? Um, they, it's been they, over a couple of weeks. Yeah, now. it's because we had to pay for them before they would um, oh, make them. I gotcha. So um, I'm going to say maybe another week and a half. and. He sent me directions already on how the uh, plaque gets adhered to the um, bench so it doesn't get taken. Yeah, but I, Rich Pasoletti said that they would go in and screw them yep, in. Yep, so um, the DPW, Rich Pasoletti, is the one who's going to 
make sure that the plaques get put out. I highly suggest something. Patty, you know, when I'm going to just pass this around. The other thing I just want to mention is yeah. that technically, um, and by ordinance, this really is the Disability Commission. Mm -hmm. It's not the Commission on Disability. So we are the, com the Disability Commission. Mm -hmm. So I may still use the word COD to describe who we are, but mm -hmm. we are the Disability Commission. And so on the plaque, it does say donated by Northampton Disability Commission. And I, I have this if anybody wants to see it. It's just a So what I have on the minutes is Northampton Commission on Disability. I should change that. So, I'm yeah. sorry. Say that again. It says Northampton Commission on Disability. It's now right. Northampton Disability Commission. And does it need to say in Northampton City Council still? Huh? It also says in Northampton City Council. Does that part come out now? Yes. Okay. You don't put that on there. Yeah. Okay. And I have another question too. Um, the seal that you know that I use for when I do the agendas and the minutes um, yeah. does that need to be changed also? No, no, no that's the no. city seal, so that's all set. Okay, because yeah, so this is a city committee yeah. commission, so that's all set. Yes. So we're just going to start saying agenda for the disability, the Northampton Disability Commission. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I will do my very best to make sense. That. Okay. Right. Also, Patty, mm -hmm. when do you leave to go on vacation in July? Because what I'm thinking about, I can call Richard Pasquale, give him a heads up on when you think the plaques might be coming in. Yeah, um, if they come in, um, Crystal, the um, assistant director, will contact. Have her we'll, contact. You know, so that they, so nothing is on hold until so I'm back. So. Um, because Rich said that he'd go right up and get them yep. right in there. Because yep. somebody will take them. There's no question. Yeah, I know. You, you see, like, a lot of them um, on bridges and stuff. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. off those they do. It's awful. You know? But what I was suggesting, and I think I had told you this before, if we could look once Richard places them on the, bench, on the okay. benches, the, the tags, that we get a hold of the Gazette and have a picture taken? Absolutely, yeah. Definitely. Of yeah. oh, all of us being there. there. That would be, that would be great. Okay. Um, yeah. Other business. Ruth, did you have one? Yeah, I do. Um, this is something we've talked about briefly in the past, but it's kind of faded away and it doesn't need, shouldn't. Um, we voted to have our COD signer, I guess we might need a new banner now, but we were going to have our banner hung in the senior center, and I haven't seen it. And we talked about advertising. We need to get our name out there. I have checked on several things. Uh, NCTV sits down with groups and does at no charge. You get to explain what you are, what your uh, goals are, you know, what you're all about, and they post that on TV. I know the senior center one is still up there from when the new senior center went in. Um, I also noticed we are not in the Con Street Journal. I don't know if Joanne can add us, but there's a lot of things in there that are not just during the day, like meetings at night are on the calendar. Maybe we can get on the calendar um, that she publishes. And I don't know if it's possible, but if we have money, can we even maybe pay for a little advertising block if we have to? For where? For the Con Street Journal. Businesses. So why should we have to? This is a Well, I don't know. Meeting. I'm just yeah. trying to kind of no. feel things out. You know? I think she did once before, Patty. I'm not I, sure. I've done articles. Didn't she put a block in there? Yeah, I've had her do that um, in the past. Um, it is listed on our monthly calendar that everybody can get. It's online. Um, in the paper, it's in the calendar. Yeah, but okay. I think she's correct, Ruth is. I think the way you had it done before with a block on yeah, it, we can do that. that was very eye-catching. Yeah, we can do that. And the visibility is right there because it yeah. stood out by itself. And another mm -hmm. way we can get free advertising, the, the Senior Center puts in a flyer or a column in the Saturday Gazette with all the things scheduled for the week. Now I checked and we weren't in there for being scheduled this week. Okay, but uh, yeah. that would be a good way to... Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to say that they pick and choose what they put in there because all of our stuff they don't even put in oh, there. Oh, really? So we can put in um, 15 things, and they may choose only to put in five. Uh -huh. um, and they put in everything for all the area senior centers. And also, um, yeah, the Springfield sorry. Republican does that too. And, and it, it mm -hmm. all depends what kind of room they have, what they'll put in. Oh, but wow. I have to say that both the Gazette and Springfield Republican have been very good about trying to get a lot in. But it isn't that we don't send it in, it is sent in. Mm -hmm. 
Ruth had mentioned to me about this bulletin board. I gotta find out where this yeah, in bulletin the lobby. board is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Ruth, where, what, what it's are It's between you? the fitness center and the coffee shop. Yeah, we have a bulletin board and it's gonna have to have the disability commission now. And the agenda, typically the budget's on there, the a lot of handouts from different organizations. On the bulletin board? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And I started that probably two years ago. I think I there was nothing on there. Right now there's not. I checked um, day before yesterday, Monday, and uh -huh. there were no minutes, no agendas. I was putting those up and then I stopped, but I'll start doing that again. Mm -hmm. um, those flyers, in fact, the flyers that we talked about at the meeting this morning where it goes on the um, um, dispatch if you're disabled, I don't think those are on our board any, are they? They aren't they on the one up they, by the counter? They should be on both. So all I'm going to say is that we put stuff up, and if people take it, mm -hmm. and you know we try to keep track of things and keep them organized. So there should be the disability indicator forms both on the bulletin board um, by the fitness center, which is for commission on for a disability commission, mm -hmm. and then also on ours over where it says special services at the senior center. And it's amazing because I've never noticed about this bulletin board. The only one I know is when you come in that side door. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. there there's uh, four rotating bulletin boards. One here at the entrance, then the one by the fitness center, which has a special panel just I for see that. commission. Then one by the library, and then one in the hallway at the end here. Now, when we're talking about, say, when you come in through this door here. Yeah. There are some things, who is responsible for removing things that are so outdated? Um, there are different staff assigned to each of the bulletin boards. Oh. So it's, I mean, whoever's passing by as a staff met, it may not be your bulletin board, but you're supposed to be taking things off. Gotcha. Um, so does the commission, does our dis disability commission actually have its own bulletin board coming in? Inside the um, lobby, there's one. In the lobby. Yeah, it, the, the bulletin boards are, um, they rotate because it's better for persons with disabilities to be able to not have to look way up yes. on a normal bulletin board. So I have those made specifically for persons with disabilities. But so they rotate, so you, you have one for, uh, or we have one just for the Disability Commission, one whole panel. Sure. And also the library. I've been hearing about the library. And what do we have in the library that's set up for people with disabilities? Well, Ruth uh, started a whole notebook with a lot of um, pamphlets and booklets. And um, so I can't, I'm going to say it's not in the library because it would not stay in the library. I have it, and if anybody wants to use it, I have it. So how do they know it's in your office? Uh, they don't. There isn't a, a, a note anymore or a sign in the library anymore. That wasn't put back after um, we yeah. kind of moved it around. So are we going to be putting a sign yeah, in there? I, I, yeah, and there could be one on the bulletin board as well that says, you know, additional pamphlets available for viewing. Okay. Um, and again, the pamphlets, there's maybe one or two. It's not that we have pamphlets that we can hand out to everybody. If we get them, if we have bulks of uh, brochures or pamphlets, they go, we have uh, containers on the bulletin board where they can go right in. So what is the reasons, because when Ruth talked about this last year and again, about filling the book up, mm -hmm. okay, why is it not visible in the library? Wasn't that the purpose? I asked Ruth and she said yes, that was the purpose of putting it in the library. Well, I think the purpose is for it to be available to people to use. I cannot guarantee that if it's put in the library that it remains in the I library. Okay. Um, that's all I so need. That's, to that's all I'm going to say um, yep. because Makes things sense. don't stay where they should. Yep. Um, Thank you. So mm -hmm. even if you put a sign on it, mm -hmm. just like the books in the library, so say property. Well, it makes sense with what she's just saying. She can't guarantee it's going to stay there. But I think put the, something else so people know it's, it's so there. Yes. I think putting um, a sign on the bulletin board, which there wasn't one. There was one in the library, and I know that it's not in there anymore. Could so. I suggest something, Patty? Yeah. Since you have the book, you're going to place a sign that, say, like with the volunteers, 
they'll come and ask you for the book? No, they can somebody? Ask, how, how do you work this out? Um, they can ask somebody at the reception desk and then they would come either get a I would make them signing, signing for it, mm -hmm. and when they bring it back, yeah, they can do that. Yeah. Just like yeah. that, that, that way, that will yeah. just protect it. It'll do a couple of things doing that. Also it's show us if there's an interest in it. Right. With, you know. Because how are they going to know yeah. anything if it's not visible? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That holds people accountable sense. if they have to sign it in. But now I can see why it would stay in her office because she knows as a director, things do not stop. Yep. Yeah. And I think the idea, <clears throat> excuse me, of signing in and out, you'll know if there's stuff right. missing out of it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. might have um, taken it. But uh, a lot of the um, materials are e that we have, if we have quantities of them, are on the bulletin board in some of the right. containers, or we also have a round information table in the lobby that people can take uh, materials. You know, there's a lot of stuff you want people to take, then there are some things like that stuff in the notebook that you don't want them to uh, remove. And if they want something, then we can make copies. We can exactly. try to get additional resources for them. And you know, all the minutes are on the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the city website. Mm -hmm. If if our poor council clerk had to take a book and file all the minutes for every committee throughout the city, they are legal documentations. They are there and they're put away. When we get handouts, like at meetings, like at the last one, I date and put where what meeting and what the date was that we received the literature, and then it goes to the library. So as things get old, so we'll know if we get newer ones, we'll know what dates. Right, and then they remove them. If they're way back, remove them and put them in a file put somewhere. In. Yeah, and for example, we got a wonderful handout <clears throat> this morning from Stavros, so I'm having copies yes. made of that that will go in um, the containers on the bulletin board. So that's, that's excellent. That. That's great. Excellent. Also, too, for new business, yes. I would like to encourage that we really look in September, October the latest, of inviting all the ADA coordinators throughout Western Mass again and having another round table. And once Chris comes, he has some pretty good ideas of doing some things also. Um, so can I just mention that September, we're hoping that um, DPW, Ned Huntley, and or Rich Barcelletti come. And then October, Louis Hasbrook was going to come. Okay, but I'm still saying we need to do it before the weather gets bad. Oh, sure. So we could even look at November, the beginning of November. Well, Ned Huntley's not going to be here for a whole hour. Oh, oh okay. true. Yeah. That right. would be in September. So he could, so he could be here for 15 through. minutes. Yeah. Because if he came to social yeah. services, he would be there for 15 minutes on the main issue, on sidewalks or whatever. Okay. So, so we could do that October. Yeah, I was going to say, if we could do October, because we don't even have a meeting in, uh, in August. Yeah. So in terms of the planning part of all of this. So we don't have a meeting in August? We discussed last year not meeting in August. We, the commission had agreed I to that. I either. Yeah, the, we had, the commission had agreed to that, to take the month of August off. So you know, then we would, could look at October then. Patty, I also talked to you about once Chris starts coming to our meeting of doing a seminar here at the Senior Center with District, um, District Attorney Maura Healy and bringing her in and inviting all agencies on who deal with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I think that would be awesome. She is coming to Worcester in September. She's making her rounds on the open meeting law. I, I think this is something we really need to look at. I think we need to get out of the box and look at another vision of which direction we're going in. And I think we would have full house with Maura Healy. Full house. Because she's up to people with disabilities, big mm -hmm. time. Yeah, yeah, should be. Uh, so once Chris starts, he probably could check that out with her to see what this her schedule is like. Even if we had to do it a different day. Yeah, true. We could do it if she could come in on a Friday or a Saturday or whatever. It doesn't have to be a night that we have a meeting. Yeah, it could be a different time. Because yeah. she's got to come in from Boston. Mm -hmm. 
I have one other. Okay, Patty, you have something else? Yep. So you all would have gotten an email, and this was a couple of weeks ago, that PDTA is doing a ridership meeting here mm -hmm. yeah. on Tuesday. Yep. Four to six. I think it's four to six. I think they're coming in earlier just to, to meet with people individually as well. Mm -hmm. so. Plus, could we take us now? Who, who left from PDTA? They mentioned that today. Who was the person that left? Um, Nicole Rowan left a long time ago. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Another name was brought up today. Hmm. Yeah. Was it July 6th? What? what? What day was that? The next um, Tuesday. Uh, June 23rd. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tori. Um, and also, I'm just going to mention about PDTA that um, they come here uh, by appointment. If people want to have a um, PDTA ADA application completed, they'll actually meet with people here um, to avoid having to go to Springfield. Could you also give an update about the two vans? One from Capital. Yep. So the Senior Center. Um, has no transportation at this point. Um, our van was um, put to rest last August. Um, and so I applied to capital improvements and we have received funding for a van which has a chairlift. And then we did a, um, a campaign called Kick the Tires van campaign that we um, are purchasing another van. So we're gonna be able to have a pretty active transportation program getting people to and from the senior center. Right, and we approved oh, that, geez. what was it, 60 something thousand at city council for the first band. And then we had mentioned about the kickoff that was going on the second one and the purpose of it was to, once you go to buy one, the deal is gonna say, okay, we'll give you a yep. deal on it because yep. you're buying two. Right, that's what we're looking for is a that's wonderful right. home. That's needed, you gotta have it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is mm -hmm. amazing not having with the chairlift, is that to take people to the ride program, like to doctors and stuff? Or? Um, mm. We're thinking about how that's going to work. Is um, the medical transportation program we have now? It's one to provide transportation, but it also provides somebody staying at the doctor's office with somebody, mm. uh, or wherever they're going, not necessarily just a doctor's office. Um, so the, I can't answer that question right now. I just, yeah, I can, I don't have an answer for that. I think Ruth brought up about the banner. Didn't I, I just that, hear that, that, yeah, that. that sign? Is yeah, there I, any way that that banner can be placed out there? Yeah, I, I, I don't know where it can go. What about between the, outside the coffee shop, isn't there a section of wall up there? <coughs> it's not real long. Yeah, there is, there's going to be a, a sign that says coffee shop up there. Oh. But yeah, I, I'll look um, that's somewhere that I can find a spot. I don't, I, again, I don't know why, that's why, I don't know where, I, and that's why it's not up. Yeah, because I don't know where it would go. Yeah. She knows this place, I don't. Well, I think they're gonna, where I suggested they're gonna put a sign that says coffee shop up there, so that won't work. The coffee? Sh yeah, there's gonna be a sign above the coffee shop and one above the gift shop. So that takes that area that you're talking about. But I'll, I'll, I'll continue to look and we can get it up. Okay. okay. Any other items for new business? Thank you, Patty. That's all I am. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All okay. in favor? Oh, she got me. <laughs>